Carrie, we look different, don't we? We do. <laughs> That's Rosanna <laughs> Gray. They're on vacay, but we're here for them happily. It is 931. Divorce is, it's obviously never easy for most of us, particularly during the holidays. Divorce attorney Rebecca Zung has helped thousands navigate those treacherous, treacherous waters. Actually, more people fire f file for divorce in January than in any other month. And she's now joining us this morning on Good Day New York to talk about this drastic change in people's lives. You actually wrote a book about this subject. And why did you decide to do that? I decided to write a book on the subject because I have so many clients who are dealing with this. It's one of the most traumatic things people deal with in their lives outside of maybe death and yet there was no go-to resource for them and I decided to create one for my clients and for everybody else who's going through it. And it's so. interesting that the, the highest divorce filings are in January I and mean, I think it seems pretty obvious it's after the holidays people you know holidays put so much pressure on you in the first place and that's when you really realize you know maybe it's time to yeah I think there's a number of reasons why January is the, the top divorce month for filings I think holidays is one of them let me get through one last set of holidays with the kids they don't want to be the bad guy who filed for divorce right before the holidays I think also because there's a tax deduction <laughs> issue Jan uh, December 31st mm. is the date that de that decides what your tax filing status is and so it's one last time to, f to file as married filing joint. Um, I think another reason is that people get their Christmas bonuses or their end of the year bonuses. They, they have the money now to go out and hire a lawyer. And I think another reason is New Year's resolutions. People are saying, you know what, I'm New Year, I want to start a new year and get out of this unhealthy relationship. And you have such a unique perspective on this because in the preface of the book you mentioned you yourself went through a divorce. Now you work as a divorce attorney. So what kind of perspective can you offer people in this book, do you think, that they might not be able to find elsewhere? Well, and when I decided to write the book, I decided to write it not just from a legal perspective in the physical part of the divorce, uh, what I call it, the physical part, that's the legal part and I do give legal advice but I also offer emotional advice and also spiritual advice for spirit, uh, freeing your spirit going forward and, and the reason why I do that is because I myself have experienced all of the emotions that one needs to get through to get complete in order to be able to feel whole and move forward. I mean this is something that a lot of us have dealt with infidelity this is this is day 11 that you, you talk about um, you know how, how do you deal how do you put a positive spin on infidelity? Well I always say that there are three deadly sins in in marriage and th that are difficult to overcome and they are abuse addiction and adultery the three A's I call and so you know if you have any one of those in your marriage it is not a healthy marriage and it, you can overcome it but it is very very difficult so what I want to do is change the conversation and say you know what instead of stigmatizing people for being divorced let's be okay with people saying it's uh, I want to get out of an unhealthy relationship I want to move forward I want to create a new opportunity for myself I just quickly want to mention in the book you talk about the stigma that's attached to divorce and I was just wondering why you think that is given in today's times how it's so prevalent in our society why yeah. is there that failure associated with divorce still well and I'm not really sure why that is I mean the statistics are staggering it's 50 percent of first marriages but 67 percent of second marriages and 73 percent of third marriages so it's almost everybody you know has either been through one or or is, two or three <laughs> or, yeah there you go and so um, I think it's time to change the conversation I don't know why there's still a stigma in death if somebody loses a spouse people shower them with support casseroles flowers they come over to their house and divorce they, friends are not sure whose side they should pick and you know whether they should stay friends with them and people end up feeling isolated and alone. I always feel bad for these celebrities I mean it's hard to say feel bad for celebrities because they make millions of dollars and they have fame and fortune and VIP access but you know when they crash and burn the relationships I mean it is a spectacular crash and burn everybody's watching everybody's making comments you know Chloe and Lamar and Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes it really is it really adds that extra layer of horribleness to 
to the whole situation, I think. Well, I think the extra layable, la layer of horribleness is that the whole world is watching. It's hard enough to get through a divorce uh, when it's just the two of you, but to now deal with the whole world watching. So the key for them is really going to be to try to settle as much as they can behind closed doors. You know, a lot of them do have prenuptial agreements, but if they can do the negotiations behind closed doors, like Tom and Katie did, and, you know, they came to a settlement in like two weeks or something, you know, it, because I think that they didn't want the media circus or around it. Rebecca Zung, the book is called Breaking Free, a step-by-step -step divorce guide. It is a brilliant book. Again, physical advice, spiritual advice. I think it's great work, and thank you so much for joining us. Thank, this thank you so much, much for having me.